All right, guys, Sunday, July the 5th. Welcome back to the garage. And uh, as mentioned yesterday, the uh, project for today was to get the uh, air dryer, so the refrigerated air dryer, up and running and plumb. So we went out and bought some fittings this morning. And we've got that connected up the way we want it. I've got to go back and tape some of the fittings as we have a few small air leaks. Other than that, it's working great. Uh, we're then going to plumb that up to our desiccant dryer stack. So that's the next step. We're going to actually move this against the wall and get it situated. And uh, like I said, we'll get it plumbed up to the stack and be ready for when we're ready to spray some uh, color coat on this car. Didn't do any sanding yet. Too hot in the garage today to do that. So maybe we'll come out tonight and do a little bit of sanding and get started on it. But uh, hopefully we'll get to the color co coat soon enough. But uh, we needed to get this step out of the way anyway. So. There you go, we'll set it up and bring you back. All right guys, we got the refrigerated air dryer hooked up and plumbed. So we've got, uh, straight from the tank, we've got a uh, filter, a water separator from the tank. We've got that hose coming over to the uh, inlet on the dryer, the refrigerator. Then we have the outlet coming out with uh, cold air. That goes up to the desiccant dryer at the bottom. And then we get, uh, clean, dry air out the top to the spray gun. So, we'll test it out now. We'll fire the compressor up, see if we've got any leaks. Hopefully not. And uh, we should be golden to uh, go ahead and spray base coat when we get to that point. So let me give her a shot. We'll crank the compressor up, check for leaks. Yeah, Sunday night I thought I'd come out and just uh, do a little project and see if I can clean my tags up a little bit. I do have a repro tag for this, but this is the original, so I'm just going to try to clean it up a tiny little bit without destroying it. So, uh, yeah, the back's looking pretty nasty too. Anyway, uh, there's the body tag. So uh, maybe I'll get a little steel wool and clean up the backs of these, and then we'll uh, figure out what we're going to do on the front of them. See if I can make them look a little bit better at least. I'm just noticing this... Um, Obviously, it must have been in a Canadian car because it looks like there's a number uh, stamped before the CD, and that's usually what happened for Canadian import cars. So I'm going to try to clean that up a little bit. Maybe that'll say 8 CD or 9 CD, which would be the year that it was actually sold or imported to Canada. So that would be either 1968 or 69. So let's see if I can clean that up a little bit. All right, guys, there they are cleaned up. We're looking a little bit better. I didn't go too crazy on it. Probably could have wet sanded this one. I still might, but uh, anyway, they're cleaner. That's about as best that I can do on this uh, tag without destroying it completely. I may put it back on the car. I kind of like the character of it uh, versus the uh, new one. That indeed is an 8. It says 8 CD, so it would have been 68 at a Canadian dealership. So uh, if you've not seen that before, I've seen it on everything from uh, TR2s all the way up to uh, TR6s. So it's kind of interesting there. Uh, factory overdrive with the LO, so left-hand drive, overdrive, uh, CD5228 is the commission number, 56, royal blue, trim 11, which is black, and uh, there's the body tag. Alright guys, Monday and back on the TR250 project and I thought I would start by giving the garage a good clean out. And, first calamity of the day, my hose just had a major blowout. That's not good. Anyway, uh, we did manage to get the garage fairly clean, got a lot of the overspray off the floor. We're actually just giving the uh, floors a quick wipe down with a little bit of Dawn uh, dish soap and uh, water just to get rid of all the overspray from inside the car. It was very, very heavy overspray and not overspray that you could actually blow away with a gun. So we're going to wash that off. It's going to be wet sanded anyway in here, so uh, no big deal with the water. We're just not going to let it sit there for a long period of time. We'll make sure we get the air gun out and dry it out as best we can before we move on to the next step. It is going to be hot out here today, somewhere around 90, 95, so it should dry this car body out pretty quickly. Anyway, so that's what we're up to today. And uh, I guess we'll have to get a new hose. We'll be back. All right, guys, gave the car a good clean down. And uh, there's still a few little areas that I just want to fix up while I can. I'd mentioned this area before, and uh, I've now come back to fix that area up. And we'll give that a quick overcoat of primer when we're done. 
Also found a little area here on the sill that I wasn't happy with. So we've sanded that back down and we're making that look a little bit better. And we'll, we'll just keep, keep continuing on going around the car with a uh, magnifying glass and uh, find what needs to be done. So we're making our way doing a last pass before we break out the uh, sanding for 400 grit and 600 grit. Um, so that's it. I uh, just wanted to give you a quick update. Filler work still not done. Getting close though. Keep saying that. All right, guys. Monday night, 5 p.m. Repair areas have been completed. This area is looking better. This area is looking better. This area is looking better. That's where I had that run. Looking better, but still not perfect. So we'll have to work a little bit more on that. But I think we're starting uh, sanding. So we got the 400 grit out. Quick update uh, for the end of the night. Uh, it's quite a nice night out actually. Still oh, just a little shy of 90, but uh, nice night in the garage. Anyway, pretty much got uh, the exterior panels and some of the interior of the trunk uh, sanded down with 400 grit dry. We're just about to start on the 600 wet and I came across an area that I wasn't happy with after I kept looking at it and looking at it. There was some runs on this back uh, shelf area. Not the shelf, but the actual channel here. So uh, I ended up sanding that back down to bare metal and repriming that. So that took a little bit of time to do that. And uh, I'm sure I'll find some more areas like that along the way that need some further attention. I'm looking at a little area here. You're probably not going to be able to see it. But something like here, I'm just sort of noticing as I'm doing, you know, the 400 grit sanding, there's a little bit of a, uh, just a little divot here in the, uh, that's probably going to be covered by the bumper brackets, but, uh, I'm going to fix it anywhere while I can. So, things like that take a little bit of extra time to do, but uh, in the end, at least to me, it'll make a bit, of, a bit of a difference. At least I'll know I fixed it as best as I could before I went to the uh, paint stage. So, I'm sure we'll find more areas like that as we move towards the front of the car as well. Anyway, we'll deal with it when we get there. So, that's it for tonight, guys. Nothing too exciting, but we are making progress. See you tomorrow. All right, guys, Thursday, July the 9th, and it is a scorcher up here today. We're currently at uh, 93 Fahrenheit, but feels like 104 Fahrenheit with the humidity. So it's not a good day to be in the garage doing anything, doing any sanding or any painting. I don't, I don't even think the paint would get out of the gun before it dried. Anyway, um, so that's where we're at. So no updates for today, and probably for the foreseeable future. I think it's supposed to be quite hot tomorrow as well. The weekend looks like it's supposed to be rainy, but it definitely looks like it's supposed to be cooling down a little bit. So uh, we'll see. It looks like Monday or Tuesday next week might be better as far as temperatures are concerned. But again, now we're starting to get into a period of rain and high humidity. So anyway, we'll uh, have to... Wait until the right day comes along to be able to spray color and uh, clear on this car. Still not fully sanded. Like I said, I'm not going to be out here sanding when it's 104 degrees with the humidity. So uh, that's just nasty. So we will wait to get out here until the weather improves. All right, guys, just wanted to give you a quick update. That's where we're at. So as a make work project, while it's uh, still too hot out in the grass to do any painting, of uh, going through my bins and I'm just sort of separating things based on category so for example I have an interior parts uh, pile over here 
and I have an engine parts over here. So when I go to assembly, I'll have sort of groups of parts ready to go um, so I can find them easily. So I'm going to re-bin them and re-tag them um, so I know where they go. So I'll, I'll break them up into uh, uh, components that sort of make sense or bins that make sense. So uh, also what I'm doing while I'm out here is I'm actually going through some of the bags of uh, fasteners that need to be cleaned up. So, for example, this is my front brake bag that I had soaking in this rust remover overnight, or this uh, yeah, rust wash. So uh, I've actually just uh, removed them from the rust wash here, and we'll take them inside and clean them up, and we'll spray them down with WD-40. So that seems to be working uh, pretty well to remove uh, a lot of the rust that was on these uh, fasteners. I'm gonna; these are the caliper bolts, so I'm gonna be reusing these. They're in good shape. So right now in this soaking batch overnight, we've got the uh, Rad Shield, the sway bar and sway bar hardware. So we'll let that soak overnight. We'll do the same thing. So we'll just continually keep doing, uh, you know, going through the hardware, soaking it, washing it, uh, and then uh, probably spraying it down with WD-40 and just rebagging it. So it's ready to go from when we reassemble. So kind of a long process. It doesn't take much uh, effort, but it's something that needs to be done. All right, Sunday, June 12th, and just coming up to 1 p.m., a little bit of a late start to the day. I had a little company out in the garage last night, so I'm just uh, sort of cleaning up. Anyway, uh, temperature is definitely better to work in. Uh, it's about 80 out here today. I think there's about, well, it says 60% humidity. I think it's actually around 75% humidity, so much better than the uh, 100 degrees with the humidity anyway so uh, back to sanding on this uh, project um, gonna continue sanding on the I don't know if I've told you what I'm planning on doing as far as painting this car is concerned and I've been wavering back and forth myself so I probably haven't shared this with you with you and if I have excuse me but um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the interior of the tub first so, uh, I'm going to concentrate on sanding the interior of the tub. We are going to mask off the exterior parts that we don't want to get overspray on. I just figured it would be easier to do the interior because I'm going to have to be doing about four, coat, four coats of color and about three coats of clear. And I don't think I can manage to do that without getting a hose strike on the exterior panels. For example, the sills here, which I'm considering the exterior of the car. If I'm bending over, for example, trying to get up under the dash here, I'm sure I'm going to end up hitting the, uh, the sills with the hose or the gun or my shorts or whatever. So I think it's probably better for me just to do the interior and then I'll of course mask that off and do the exterior. So it's going to be a two-step process. I would really like to be able to spray the whole thing in one, in one go like I did the primer, but uh, primer is one thing, paint and clear is another. So. I think what we'll do is do the sensible thing and do it in two stages, interior first and then the exterior panels. So that's what we're concentrating on. I did start to uh, sand all the external panels and I may continue to do that based on uh, what the weather looks like, but I think we're going to switch now to going back to um, finishing the internal sanding. I actually did pretty much most of the trunk. I've got a lot of sanding dust here to clean up. We're going to have to wash this car again before we go to the paint stage, but uh, let me continue on with the sanding. Again, it's a combination of uh, soft block uh, maroon scrubbies uh, for the interior of the car. So we'll continue to do that, get the interior sanded, washed down. Probably gonna have to wait a day for it to dry. Um, and then maybe we'll be able to spray the interior of this car tomorrow again. And that's gonna be weather dependent. But I think I've got a little bit of a window in the next couple days. It's not prime painting time, Temperature wise is okay, humidity is still fairly high, but I think we're just going to have to risk it and go for it um, and live with the consequences, which I hope there won't be many. So let me get sanding and I'll stop talking. All right guys, just coming up to about uh, 5.30 p.m. or so and the car has now been uh, sanded down and washed thoroughly and uh, dried. And we're going to let it dry overnight as well, but uh, in the meantime, I'm going to start taping this up. So again, I'm going to do the uh, engine bay, passenger compartment and trunk first, and then we'll come back and we'll do the exterior panels at a later date. 
So uh, let me start the taping. We'll come back when I'm done. Uh, that's probably going to take me a few hours to do the taping, or a little while at least. So we'll get her taped up with the expectation that we can shoot this uh, in color in the morning. So if I was in an auto body and paint uh, shop, they'd be laughing at me right now on my tape job, but that's okay. It is now taped. I hate taping, masking, whatever you want to call it. I hate doing it on interior painting. I hate doing it on automotive painting. I just hate it. So I'm not very good at it and uh, I get bored with it very quickly. So the results are not always the most pleasurable to look at, but anyway, it should work. I'm uh, just worried about getting some heavy, heavy overspray on certain areas. I am going to wet sand the external panels once more before we go to color on those. So if I do get some overspray on those, that can get uh, wet sanded out. So I'm not too concerned about that, but I figured I'd just try to mitigate it as much as possible. So it is ready to go. It just needs uh, one more wipe down uh, tomorrow morning or whenever we decide to paint this. Again, we're gonna check the weather tomorrow and see how we're doing. Um, I don't think it's gonna be too hot tomorrow, so I might have to use my medium reducer so we will see but uh, yeah she's ready to go so one step closer used an $11 roll of masking tape on this all right guys so that's it for now we'll uh, pick it up tomorrow morning when we uh, mix some color up hopefully all right guys that's it for now thanks for watching so I thought I'd uh, spend a little bit of time and empty the rest of my uh, pint of DB9 Nightwatch Blue into my new gallon, just so I have the same mixture. So uh, there it is. We're just going to mix it up and let it sit overnight. And then we will be ready to spray in the morning, hopefully. Just out here having a quick look, doing a quick cleanup, and getting things ready for tomorrow. All right, that's it for now. All right, guys, the day is finally here where we're going to be able to uh, spray some color on the 68 TR250 project. We've got the uh, car wiped down with uh, grease and wax remover and uh, alcohol is our final wipe. We're uh, just about to wet the floor down out here. We've got our uh, chiller on. We've got our compressor drained. We've got our desiccant ready to go. Fan set up. We got one here and one on the other side of the garage, sort of pushing down on the floor towards this exit fan. So uh, I just checked all my taping. That seems to be still intact. So I think we're pretty much good to go as far as paint is concerned. So I guess the next time you see this car, or at least the interior bits of this body tub, they will be in royal blue. So have a good last look of this car in primer. I am not going to do a sealer coat as you've been following along. I've pretty much over primed this after I blocked it and uh, I don't have any sand throughs anywhere. Um, the primer, underlying primer looks very good so uh, I don't feel a need to seal this. The only reason I was thinking of sealing it, I was going to do a black sealer just to help with the uh, the paint coverage, but uh, we're just going to go probably with three coats, possibly four coats of blue. We'll see how it covers, but uh, anyway, we'll uh, we'll take it from there, and uh, I guess we'll bring you back once this is fully painted and clear coated. It should take me quite a few hours to do this, since uh, there's going to be three to four coats of color, and probably in the exposed areas like the engine bay there's probably going to be three coats of clear possibly in the uh, inside here may only be two coats of clear trunk might be two coats of clear we'll see remember this trunk is going to be raptor lined in the uh, spare tire compartment so there's actually not a lot of area that won't actually be covered by the raptor liner so there'll be few areas of blue left in the rear here so anyway i'm rambling let's get the uh, paint mixed up and uh, I should probably tell you, again, just to go recap on what I'm doing. So I'm shooting the Matrix brand low VOC, uh, I think it's called MPB LV. Uh, this is DB9, which is a Chrysler Nightwatch Blue, which is purportedly close to the original Royal Blue that the Triumphs used. 
I'm going to be shooting it with my um, little mini SATA jet gun here with a decup system. This is the uh, uh, 4400 uh, HVLP gun, mini SATA jet. Uh, so that's what we're going to use for that. Probably going to use a medium reducer today because it's not that hot out. Humidity is a little too humid to actually be painting out here. It says it's 60 here on the humidity humidity, humidity gauge on the uh, temperature gauge here, but uh, I think it's a little higher than that. It's supposed to drop during the day, so possibly by the time I get to clear, the humidity will be a little bit lower as well. So for clear, I'm using the Matrix AG40, which is a high, uh, high solid uh, European style clear. So hopefully uh, we're gonna take our time. We've got lots of time, no hurry. We're gonna try to get all of the areas, you know, some of these areas are a little difficult, like up and under the, uh, the drip rails here on the uh, engine compartment, up and under the bulkhead uh, can be a little bit difficult as well. That's why I'm using the, uh, the mini jet gun. Up in this area can be a little difficult. So we'll take our time, we'll do our best. We're gonna to try to avoid any runs or as many runs as possible. So, uh, gotta concentrate. Anyway, that's it for now. We'll be back. All right guys, base coat is done. That's four coats of blue. The tough uh, body to shoot, lots of angles. A little splotchy in the uh, interior, but that's gonna be all carpeted and covered. So it's a bit of a waste of paint in there. And the trunk I was just concentrating on these areas here. Because this again is going to be raptor line in the center. So we're waiting for this to flash off. Probably wait an hour or so. And we'll come back out here and we'll do the clear. All right, be back then. All right guys, clear coat is mixed. So we're gonna go with our first coat of clear. Wish me luck. One big fly flying around out here. I hope he continues to keep flying around. All right guys, it's about a half an hour since we sprayed the last coat of clear and just stopped taking a quick look. You can hear my uh, fan squealing over there. The bearing's just about gone in it, so I'm going to be in the market for a new fan anyway. Just ignore it. So it's sprayed not too bad. I don't see a lot of runs, which is good. Um, I do see a few areas that I'm not real happy with, but in reality, when everything is back in the engine bay, for example, you won't see much of it anyway. The little bulkhead panels here and here I probably should have used some polyester uh, primer on those areas or did a bit more body work. They're a little grainy uh, or pebbly because the uh, metal was pitted fairly badly in those areas. So I probably should have body worked those a little bit more. But in reality, with the uh, clutch and brake master cylinder on this side, you're not going to see much of that and all the brake lines. And, um, you know, uh, on this side, it's going to be a washer bottle and the hosing and the motor on that side. You won't see much of that. So. In reality, you will not see much of that anyway, so I probably can live with that. Uh, as mentioned, I only did, uh, you know, a couple coats of um, color in here, and you can see there's some discolorations where I uh, didn't get the uh, third or fourth coat on here. And again, this is all gonna be covered with either like a fat matte sound deadening, for example, or it's gonna be all carpeted uh, or paneled, so you won't see any of this anyway. I did sort of concentrate up here a little bit to make sure I got the underside of the, uh, the firewall pretty well. And as far as I can see, we did okay with that. I did finish the trunk area pretty well on uh, both sides. I don't see any runs over here, which is good. I know it's pretty dark back in this area. And again, Raptor liner are going to be in here. So uh, I think that's going to probably be okay. But until I can get the garage doors open and have a, a bit more light on the rear end of the car, I can't really tell how well we did, so I think it's going to be okay though. Wheel wells definitely turned out pretty well. No runs in those, which is good. Not a lot of trash, which is good. So I'm not minding the color. The color looks pretty good. So yeah, 
Anyway, next step will be to unmask. Uh, I think we'll probably wait about another half an hour before we do that, uh, so we don't disturb any dust um, until this is completely dry. That one fly is still flying around, so we didn't get stuck in my clear coat, which is good. Not yet, anyway. So, it's just a quick view. I'm not sure how well it's coming out on camera, but uh, again, we'll get the garage doors open here hopefully in the next hour or two, and we'll have a little bit better look at it. All right. Okay, can't remember whether I took a video of it unmasked or not. So here it is unmasked with the uh, garage doors open, so in full light. And uh, like I said, for the most part, it looks pretty good. There's some areas where I need to go to back and do a few uh, touch-ups. It's really, really hard to get paint in here. And I still didn't do a very good job of that, so I've got a little bit of a, a need for some paint down in here. But other than that, it looks pretty good. Again, most of, a lot of these areas that I'm not extremely happy with are going to be covered by pieces of equipment, so you won't even be able to see behind it anyway. So uh, I think I'm okay with the engine bay. I'm definitely okay with the interior. As I mentioned, I've only done a couple of coats in here anyway, and all of this is going to be covered by interior panels. It's a little light in the footwells for me. I should have probably put another coat of paint up on the footwells. I think the bulkhead is okay. Again, you're not going to be able to really see that very well anyway. Uh, there's a carpeting that piece that goes across that uh, round piece where the uh, transmission tunnel goes, so that's going to be covered as well. So, again, for the most part, this is going to be fine. The trunk turned out okay and it's going to look a little splotchy because remember I only did a couple of coats of paint in the well so you can see that it's lighter here but again this is going to be raptor liner right up to the edge and then it gets back into the dark royal blue. However there's an area here you can see that's quite light compared to over here which is much darker so there is a panel that covers it but I just was a little bit shy of getting enough color in there so I'm going to have to reshoot some color up in there. So that's a little uh, a little disappointing and it's a little light actually over on this side I'm not sure how well this is coming through on the camera but anyway again there's some areas I'm not real happy with but overall I'm pretty happy with the results particularly the engine bay I think is going to look fine uh, it's sprayed up nicely I've got absolutely well no no runs that I can see at the moment um, and it's come up pretty shiny so uh, not a lot of bugs which is good I don't even know if I'll have to sand and buff this I think it might be okay as is. Again, the bottom down here is actually Raptor liner, so it may look a little funky right now, but actually it already done Raptor liner, so I've just got to go re-black that bottom part. So uh, things are going to look better once I obviously finish doing what I need to do as far as putting the black bits uh, back in or put them in to start with, like I mentioned the trunk already. But uh, yeah, so I think that looks okay. A little bit uh, iffy in there. All right, it takes a lot to make me happy. <laughs> so, anyway, the good thing is I know that the external panels are going to be much better or much easier to do than the internal panel panels are and they're in much better shape obviously when, than what the actual engine bay was in so uh, I'm sure those are going to look a lot better once they're painted uh, the royal blue as well but uh, it's good to get the uh, the body internal bits painted and uh, out of the way although I still like I mentioned need to go back and touch a few areas up that I'm not happy with so all right, guys, we'll upload where I'm at just so you can see that we actually did get some paint on the car, finally. It's a, a big milestone, as I've mentioned, for me. So there you are. There's the update. And we'll let this dry for a couple of days before we start working on the external bits. And this will probably show you the importance of having good light in your garage. Looks pretty dark. <laughs> at the rear end of the car with the garage door shut. You'd never know that I missed that area there. I don't think. So, make sure you have good light. Live and learn.